industrial racking systems. Daily Operator's Guide Checking of pallets to be racked What to check before loading a pallet into industrial racking? Pallet should be in good repair. Contents of pallet should not overhang pallet. Contents of pallet should be secure. Weight of pallet should be checked to ensure that it is less than the capacity of the bay it is going into. Heaviest pallets should be located closest to the floor, lightest in higher positions. The height of the load should not exceed the longest length of the pallet. Center of gravity of pallet should be known. Placing pallets in racking system. Clearance distances for heights of up to 3 meters. Distance A 75 millimeters. Distance B 75 millimeters. Distance C 75 millimeters. Keeping the correct distance between pallets stops pallets catching on the racking or on the pallet to the side and helps prevent pallets from falling from height. Leaving enough space above the pallet is important so that it does not catch on the above bar when withdrawing the pallet with sufficient stabilizing tilt. What size of pallet? Why size matters? Standard size pallets usually have 50 millimeters overhanging the beam. Using oversized pallets means the corner blocks are not supported over the racking. Protruding edges over 50 millimeters may get caught when lifting and cause the pallet to fall. The 50 mm overhang prevents the pallet falling from height if the forks rub on entry slash exit to the pallet. Visual check of racking. Visually check racking before putting pallet in places. Ensure the weight capacity plate is fitted and your load is less than the maximum capacity of the bay. Check for any obvious damage to the beam that the pallet will be placed on. Check for any protruding pallets that your pallet or backrest may catch on. Dry 15 to 20 centimeters from racking, disengage gear, apply handbrake before operating hydraulic controls. Damage to racking. Prevention is better than cure. Any damage should be immediately reported to management for repair. Any damage to racking should be checked and if deemed unsafe should be unloaded. A report of the damage including photograph should be recorded on the Quantix system. Never load a pallet into a damaged bay. Monthly racking checks. Base plates. What to check for? Are they fixed to the floor? Missing anchor bolts. Damage to anchor bolts. Gaps between the base plate and floor splits or cracks to the metal work. Any visible sign of damage? Is the fixing good between the upright and base plate? Is it twisted or damaged? Upright post. Is it twisted or damaged? Place a straight edge between the good points of the upright post. Measure between the straight edge and the middle of the bend. Three millimeters is the maximum permissible measurement for front impact damage. 5 mm is the maximum permissible measurement for side impact damage. If this has been impacted and less than the recommended amount record as green fault depending on severity. Horizontal and diagonal bracings. Checking for damage. Place a straight edge between good edges. Measure from point of damage to straight edge. Maximum permissible damage is 10 mm to diagonal and horizontal bracings. If this has been impacted and less than the recommended amount record as green fault. Column guards. Where installed? Column guards are installed to protect the uprights. Check for gap between guard and upright. Check for loose or missing fixings. Safety locks. No more than one pin per side of the beam check it is present. These pins are designed to break on impact so that in case of a collapse only a section of racking should fall rather than the whole section. Beams. Deflection. Beams will bend slightly when under load, this is called deflection. 
Maximum permissible deflection on a loaded beam is calculated by measuring the space between the uprights and dividing by 200 to give us our maximum allowed deflection. So, for a beam with a span of 2700 mm, the maximum deflection is 2700 over 200 equals 13.5 mm loaded. This is measured using a piece of string along the span of the beam as a straight line and measuring the deflection or bend between the string and the dip of the beam. When measuring an unloaded beam, we would divide by 1000 instead of 200. So for a beam with a span of 2700 millimeters, the maximum deflection would be 2.7 millimeters unloaded. Visual check. Record any damage. Front impacts to a beam decrease stability so much that they must always be recorded as a red fault. Ensure the beams are fitted horizontally. End connectors should be in place with no visible signs of damage. Record keeping. Give every upright its own unique identification number. Place a cross at a fault. Additional information. Inspector's name. Place a cross at the risk rating. Risk codes. What code to record? Red risk. Areas where a high level of damage is identified of over twice the limits. This warrants immediate offloading and isolation of the affected area until repair work is carried out. Amber risk. Areas where the damage identified is greater than the limits. This warrants remedial work to be carried out. However, the damage is not sufficiently severe to warrant the immediate offloading of the area. No additional loads shall be placed in the affected area. If repairs are not carried out within four weeks, an amber risk item automatically becomes a red risk item. Green risk. Areas where damage is present, however, the level of damage is within the limits and should be recorded for further consideration at the next inspection. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you.